A new technology that's been very useful for me this year in the classroom is something called Google Groups. So anyone who has a Gmail account actually has access to Google Groups. So what I'm first going to do is you can log on to Google anywhere you are or onto Gmail. Um, right now I'm actually already logged into Google, but some of you might be more familiar with Gmail. So I'm going to first walk you through how to get here. So you go to gmail.com. And mine should be automatically logged in here with my school email address. And then up here, you kind of have your options that you can click on. And one of the drop down options is Google Groups. This is a tool created by Google where you can actually set up email groups to connect with multiple people at once. So it's been extremely useful to me in my current position as a journalism teacher because there are often things that I need to communicate with all of my students at once in yearbook but all of my kids are split up into four different sections. And so this is an easy way to communicate with everyone. And it also makes sharing Google Documents extremely easy. So once you get, once you get your groups page, um, what I typically do is you can go to my groups or you can create a new group. When you go to create a group, you get to title it something. So I'm just gonna call this one test. And then you get to set up what your uh, custom group email address is. So basically what you're doing here is you're adding a bunch of people to one list and they're gonna fall under one email address. So let's say that I want to include my husband and my sister and my dad and my uncle, all of the people in my family, I want to add them to one email group and anytime I email, um, I want to email all of them rather than typing in their individual email addresses. I can just type in whatever my group email address is. So let's say for this example, maybe I want it to be family. Now the one thing about this is you do have to have a specific custom URL. So I work at Shawnee Heights High School and so I do actually, we have our own domain name. So that's the reason why we can do this. Um, then you would add a group description. Uh, we'll just say test email group includes all of my family members. And then there are other settings, obviously, that you can select, etc. Um, let's see. And then up here at the top, it just says create. So once I've actually created the group, then I have a couple of options. I can first invite people to join the group, or I can customize my settings, or I can add a topic and start posting. So maybe the first thing that I want to do is I want to actually invite people to join my group. So I'm not going to add people's email addresses here because um, I haven't told them about this project, but I will go back to my groups and I'm going to show you one that I've actually already set up. So I'll go to my groups and as I mentioned, I'm a yearbook um, and newspaper teacher, I'm a journalism teacher, and so I have set up, for example, this yearbook group here. So not only can I post here, but I can also go back to Gmail and I can click compose and maybe I just say I want to email everyone in my yearbook group. Do you see how it pops up there? Yearbook2016 at shinyheights.net. So this right here was the custom email address that I came up with and then any time that I send an email to this, it will actually disperse it to about the 80 people that I have in that group. So if I go back here, um, I could go back to my groups, and if I go under this one and I say manage, it shows me all of the people who I have included under this email address. So um, that's kind of a basic walkthrough of how you set one up, and then once it's set up, as I mentioned, you can either send them an email, or the other thing is if I were to go to my Google Drive and I need to share anything with all of those people at once, all I would have to do is, for example, let's say that I need to share this editor role responsibilities assignment. I could go up here to plus and it says share. And I could just type in yearbook 2016 and I could say can view. And if I were to send this email, it would send an invitation to each of those 80 people in this group saying you now have access to view this document. So it makes it really easy to share those. Um, so my purpose for this tool is to keep all my students informed and it also gives everyone the ability to communicate effectively. So because we have so many students that are all working on one product together on one yearbook, it's really important that we're all on the same page. 
So for me, my audience for this tool is my students, but it's also a super easy way to create groups for all of the teachers in your school or district if they haven't already. Um, or you can also send out an email to all of the parents of your students if you need to. It's also really helpful for coaching. So I'm a basketball coach and each week I send out a weekly email to parents regarding our schedule. And so rather than each week typing in all of their names individually, I can just create a Google group and send it to basketball parents or whatever I set up. Um, let's see. My standards that I was using for this um, were mainly it's the modeling, the digital age work, and the learning. So teachers are supposed to exhibit knowledge, skills, and work processes representative of an innovative professional in a global and digital society. This definitely matches with that. And also, the other standard was to collaborate with students, peers, parents, and community members using digital tools and resources to support student success and innovation. So this is a great tool. Um, I know Google is probably not new to you, but Google has all of these little tips and tricks and other products that can be very helpful whenever you are working with your classes. So good luck.